Now we're ready to tackle part B, which was to find the total impedance seen by the voltage source. Now for part B, we are given the result from part A, the current, total current, supplied by the source, and that will be useful here in finding the impedance for part B. Of course, we know the relationship between current and impedance, and that's Ohm's law which in phasor form is Z equals the phasor voltage divided by the phasor current. So to solve for the impedance, we can just directly substitute in the values that we are given. And we have, I'll just use polar form, uh, the voltage is 60 volts at zero degrees. And the current we found in part A is 123.6 milliamps at an angle of negative 60.96 degrees. And that will be approximately, uh, let's see, I need that in polar form. So I get, two thirty five point seven plus J, four twenty four point four in ohms. Now it might be handy to have that value in polar form, so I will convert that to polar form here and write 485.5 at an angle of 60.96 degrees, and that is in ohms. And that's what we were asked to find in part B. This represents the total impedance seen by the voltage source. Finally, we are asked to find the true apparent and reactive power delivered by the source, and then also draw the power triangle. So, for solving part C, now we know that power in phasor form can be solved for using the phasor form power is equal to I squared times Z. And we have these values, Z we just solved for in part B, and we also have the current from part A. And so we can use those directly here in solving for the power in part C. So substituting in the values that we got from the previous parts of the problem, I have the power is equal to the current, 123.6 at an angle, negative 60.96 degrees, and that's milliamps, which I will square and then multiply by the impedance, 485.5 at an angle, 60.96 degrees. And I get seven point four one five uh, at an angle of negative sixty point nine six degrees, and that is in volt amps. That's an apparent power. So if I convert that to rectangular coordinates, then I can get the true and the reactive power, and I can draw my power triangle. So I convert to rectangular coordinates, and I see that the power, the true power, or real power, is 3.6 watts, and the reactive power is negative 6.483 volt amps reactive. The negative sign uh, just reminds me that the circuit is acting inductively. So drawing out the power triangle, And that's what we were asked to find here in Part C. Now, although we were not asked about the power factor in the question, we observe that the power factor is simply the cosine of this angle in the power triangle, which is negative 60.96 degrees. So we can easily find the power factor uh, going back to our calculator and extracting the argument or the angle and then taking its cosine, making sure the calculator is in degree mode when we do this, and doing so results in a power factor of 0 0.4855, or about 48.6% for this circuit.